Eli Lilly was originally our mother corporation. We were the Shanghai-based venture capital arm of Lilly back in 2008. And in 2011, we actually spun out as an independent entity. But at the time, Eli Lilly was our only LP. And then starting in Fund 3, we also raised money from external capital. So today, Eli Lilly remains our largest LP, but there's no formal relationship between us and the corporation. So in China, a lot of entrepreneurs would like to be associated with an international brand, such as Eli Lilly, and the fact that we are backed by them, as they're one of our largest LPs, to them is a great stamp of validation to their startup. Um, and I think from a value-added perspective, Eli Lilly has a vast global network and many capabilities. So uh, there's actually a pretty exciting deal that happened last year. One of our companies in Fund2 called Innovant Biologics did a very large deal with Eli Lilly. The total deal value was more than 1.5 billion US dollars. And the way it works is there is an asset exchange. So there's certain drugs developed by Lilly and certain drugs developed by Innovent, and they decide to partner. And Innovent can then leverage Eli Lilly's global capabilities, and Eli Lilly can enter China with a very strong local partner. So it's a very synergistic, I would say. It's probably not surprising to you that we are the best at drugs, given that's where we came from, a drug company. I would say 75% of what we do is still biopharmaceuticals, which is really just the biotech sector and biopharma sector. And another 25% of what we do is the med tech and diagnostics. Everything our team does is very technical. Our entire team has technical background. And we would love to enter into healthcare services and health IT one day, but I think our sweet spot is still in the very technical-based, product-based sectors. So when we back uh, US or European companies, it's pretty simple. There's only two categories that we invest in. There's one category that's uh, what we call category breaking. And the, the science is so revolutionary that even from day one, the entrepreneur thinks that it's a global company. And today, China is the second largest pharmaceutical uh, market in the entire world. So even from day one, entrepreneurs want an option to enter China one day. So an example in our fund three would be Timunity, which is a cell therapy company in the CAR T space. And this type of company has such global potential that they took our money uh, in hopes of entering China one day. There's a second type of company we invest in overseas that has a China operation. A great example would be Just Biotherapeutics in our fund three. They have a headquarters in Seattle and also a Hangzhou site. And as such, LEV is able to invest in both entities and is very naturally cross-border. So I guess in summary, when we invest overseas, we want our capital to actually provide some value add. And given we're a China fund, that's either an option to enter China or uh, investment into the China entity from day one. I think it's no surprise that there are a lot of funds that want to enter our space. The good news is there's plenty to go around. It's a pillar industry, and it's one of the rare pillar industries that's growing still rapidly. And uh, as I mentioned before, LAV happens to focus on the highly technical sectors, uh, biopharmaceuticals, and also med tech and devices. There's also healthcare services, health IT. I think there's really just plenty of investment space to go around. Uh, and uh, I would welcome you know, more GPs to enter our space. Uh, what's also very interesting is if you consider um, just different pockets of what GPs could be good at. I mean, some will build up highly technical teams like us, and some will stick to traditional like, operating metrics, financial metrics, and I think you'll basically just see everyone uh, do what they're good at. And just one other data point to share with you. As you probably know, the U.S. spends uh, something like 18 or 19 percent of GDP on healthcare. Today, China only spent 6 percent. So there's only one way to go, and that's up 